Hey, I'm Mark Tillerson. Uh, in this video around Google Merchant Center disapproved products, I just want to focus on the invalid value GTIN. So if you've got disapproved products due to that invalid value GTIN and you want to understand what that means in the first place, what causes that invalid value in GTIN and how to fix the invalid value GTIN problems, that's what we're going to cover very quickly in this video. So as usual, um, if you are struggling with this and you need some help, uh, we'd love to hear from you in the the comments feel free to ask questions we will try and help you out in there make sure you subscribe for more videos on Google Merchant Center how to optimize your data and Google Shopping how to get more sales online and uh, please give us a thumbs up if this helps you out really appreciate you doing that so the item status we've got with this particular product is invalid value GTIN so in the description I will include a link to a video specifically around GTINs and what they are how to get them how to find that data so I'm going to assume that you've either seen that video or you understand what this GTIN is. So very briefly, if you haven't seen that video, uh, GTIN is a global trade identification number. Google has access to a huge database of every product on the planet, basically. Um, and if it has a GTIN, a unique identification number, then Google knows what that product is and it knows that it should have one and it does have one. GTIN typically is just the barcode on the product. So if you're selling a mobile phone, there is uh, a GTIN as a barcode on the box that will be the barcode if it's a pair of nike trainers then the barcode is the gtin if it's a book it's an isbn number there's a barcode on the book okay so if you are selling these products go to your stock room and you'll get the id from there if you are buying these products from somewhere that data should be available from your supplier but the gtins uh, do exist for millions of products not every product has one so if you make a product yourself or it's a small manufacturer very specific items then they don't have to have a gtin but if they do have a gtin and google knows about it then you have to include that data it's not optional you have to include it okay and what's happening here if we scroll down we can see how Google is ending up in Merchant Center, how we ending up with these final attributes. The final attribute we're ending up with this GTI with that ID there. Okay, so where's this coming from? So in this case, um, we've then got a feed coming from the website. So remember, the data is in the database of the website. That data is being output in this case via a feed, could equally be via an API if you're using something like Shopify, and then that is being pulled into Merchant Center. So this data is coming directly from the database on the website. So what's being picked up here is the GTIN is being declared in the database. That is then being pulled into Merchant Center. Google is looking at this product on the website and saying, it should have a GTIN. Have you declared a GTIN? Yes. Is it correct according to our database? Yes, it is. Okay, good. That's all passed. In this case, it's looking at the product and saying, I think the I the GTIN is this. That's what this product is. And then it's analyzing your data and saying, well, what GTIN have you used? That's not the one we've got. So we're cross-referencing the GTIN with the product that's on your page and saying that ID is 1234. You're telling me that that ID is 1235. That's not what we have. And therefore it's saying, that is an incorrect GTIN. Okay, so that's why it's an invalid value. So you may get this issue if you're just kind of going, it's telling me I want a GTN, I'll just put 12. Okay, that's not good enough. You have to put the actual GTIN for that product. Other issues that cause this are where, let's say, for example, you have, um, so I've had this just recently uh, with someone who commented on another YouTube video we did around this. So let's say that you can buy a product, let's just say it's a t shirt for ease, and that t shirt is available in red, blue, green, and yellow. The GTIN is 12345, okay? But the GTIN of 12345 doesn't matter if it's red, blue, green, or yellow. It's the same GTIN. However, what we want to do is we want to create a product in our feed for the red version of the t shirt, the green version, and the blue version, and the yellow version. So we've got four products. If someone looks for yellow t shirts for women, then we can match the yellow t shirt, show the yellow t shirt, and get a sale for our yellow t shirt. If someone's looking for a red t shirt for women, it can match the red product. Okay, and that's where you get into issues with the GTINs, not necessarily invalid, but now you've got four products with the same GTIN and Google will go, I hate you, you can't do that. You've now got duplicate products in your feed because you've got four products with the same GTINs and they have to be unique. So you can't do that, okay? 
So one way that these are created, these invalid uh, value GTINs, one way is that you've just put some random data in there that's not correct. You might be mapping the MPN field onto GTIN for some reason, and that's incorrect. You may have put this ID in your database in the back end of the website, and it's just missing a digit off the end. That could also happen. The other thing that can happen as well is that sometimes there is a product, let's say it's a box, and it has an item in it, and it has an accessory. And the item with the accessory has a GTIN, okay? And then what happens is that you've decided that you sell the product and the accessory separately. So now we've got the product, which Google might think has a GTIN, but it doesn't because the GTIN is for product and accessory, whereas you now have a product. It doesn't really have a GTIN, but maybe use the GTIN for the product and accessory, but that's not right. Really, is it? Because product and accessory is £100, product is £90, accessory is £10. Okay, so you should have now individual product, but it doesn't have a GTIN, uh, individual accessory, sorry, doesn't have a GTIN. But you also then have individual product, which doesn't really have a GTIN because the GTIN belongs to the two together. So that's where you get a mismatch with that data so if you get that you want to probably appeal to google my expectation is you probably won't get very far google support is not very helpful when it comes to this they don't understand your data and frankly they don't really care so it's up to you to fix it so the options then are that you include a gtin with the product and forget the accessory and then you have a battle around the accessory and going well the identifier doesn't exist so you can't have that or if you absolutely want to advertise it and you can't work around it by splitting it and doing some jiggery pokery with gtins and identifier exists equals false and that kind of stuff you can't do those things and you absolutely must advertise it then you need to put it back as one product and have the correct GTIN and that's the trade-off don't shoot the messenger I know that sucks but sometimes that's what you have to do so ideally uh, include the GTIN in your original data you could create a supplemental feed I'll put a link to the description in how to do that don't recommend it though because you've now using an automated data source and supplementing data with a manual data source so you're gonna have to oh we've added another hundred products add them to your source add, them, add another hundred products add them to your supplemental feed all the time so I don't recommend that method but you can use that if you're in a bit of a hole and you have to but ideally fix the GTIN issues in your data feed if you're still stuck with that and this video hasn't helped and you've got some weird unique problem with that data please comment um, or you can contact us via tillison.co.uk and we'll try and help you out there but uh, yeah love to hear your comments if this has helped you out please give us a lovely thumbs up really appreciate that and don't forget to subscribe for more videos on Google Merchant Center